Clickdork back again. I had a really interesting conversation with a customer today, and it gave me an idea to uh, kind of do a video. They've got a situation where they want to basically do some training classes. Imagine that. They want to train multiple users on how to use Click, um, but they're not sure if those users are actually going to, you know, become real Click users in the future. It's just part of a, a training class so that everybody can... Um, start becoming data fluent in their organization. They've got a great culture and, and they're trying to move forward with that. So I admire that. Um, we talked about how they could possibly do this because they don't really want to create real users to do this. They just want some training users. Um, so I told them I would put something together. There's a couple of ways to do that. User data connectors are the way that we pull the users into the system. Typically, your administrator would have pointed one to your Active Directory or your LDAP, and it would go out and look at your real systems users. Um, but that's not the only way that users can get into Click. We could create a connection for a local machine. So while they may not be domain users, those training users could exist just as local users on the machine. And you would build that connector um, to pull in those local users, training user 1, training user 2, training user 50, right? And by doing that, your authentication would be that local machine. Maybe you don't want to go to that level, though. Um, maybe what you'd rather do is you, you might just want to have some CSV file so that you can change things. Um, so before I show you how to do this, the one thing I want to bring up, as I build this out, there is no authentication for this. This is, I'm going to have these users, but they're not authenticated. They simply say, hey, I'm user 5, I'm training user 16. Um, so I want, I want to make, make you aware of that. So if you want it to be password protected, even for training, you would want to go through a local directory connector and just look at your local machine users on whatever server. You're probably going to do something like that in your dev environment or your, your QA environment. Um, to do that, um, but I've got this ODBC connector. All I'm looking at is a couple of CSV files. Hey, go read the data from this CSV so that I can change this. And there's two main files. I want a user table and an attributes table. The attributes are going to give me information I need about those users so that I'll know what groups they belong to, what their security should be, things like that. So let me minimize this. I'm going to show you. In the users table, it's just what you think. It's a user ID and a name. I've got Penny Sillin, Saul Bones, Executive, Candy Striper, blah, blah, blah. This could just as easily be training user 1, training user 2, training user 3. Doesn't really matter at this point, right? Then I've got an attributes table. And in these attributes, I say, here's who my user ID is. I've got a type. What is my type of, of, of an attribute for this person? And then what's the value? So I'm going to scroll down here just a little bit and show you a couple different things. I can have a group like click designer, click sense login, click contributor. These properties that you could give, you then set security rules up. If they've got login access, they're allowed to get into Sense, right? They can get into the, to the hub and they would be able to use the software. If they're a designer, maybe you want to put security rules around. These are people who can edit a page. If they're a contributor, perhaps, these are people who could actually do their own My Work instead of just having to use what's out there. Um, so you can have a number of properties. You can say, hey, are they allowed to access the hub? Are they allowed to access the QMC? If I want to give it an image, if I want to um, have different things about them, like what their title is, I can put as much information in there as I want to have in that. And then what Click does is it brings that back in. So we're gonna, we would create a task that would read this data. We bring these users into the system now. 
And if I look at my users, you'll see these users and I can take a look at all their properties. Hey, they're allowed to go to the app hub. Um, they're not blacklisted. They're not prohibited. These are the groups that they're in. And then here's these other properties that we created about them. Right, so all the things that we need. And now I've got security rules around these people. So now I've got my 20 or 50 training users imported. How do we actually connect as them? Again, it's not, they're not going to be authenticated. So if I come out to the hub, to my hub, it's going to go through a Windows authentication and I get authenticated through Windows and click simply lets me in. But I may not want to go that way because I'm not going to be able to log in as these training users. They're just exist in a CSV file. So what you can do is each of these users, you could just connect. Hey, go connect to here. This is the port for that user directory connector. So it's going to create the ticket. And the login is this user ID. And I want to use this directory connector to do it. The app I'm trying to get to, that property is the hub. And so I simply have that. And I would be able to, instead of logging in as me, I come in and I log in as Penny Sillen. And Penny Sillen has access security wise to whatever groups we gave her and what the permissions were we set. So if this was training users, maybe the only thing they have access to is the training stream, right? Well, I don't want to deal with this kind of stuff for my end users. That's crazy. I'm not going to make them paste, you know, this whole thing together. Well, I could create a web page for them. Um, that lets me just show the users, hey, you're test user one, hey, you're training user 15, hey, you're this, you're this. I need you to log in as though you're this person. And all they would have to do here is hover over one of the training users, log in. And you'll see as I hover at the bottom, that person's name is there because this is just HTML. I'm just giving them a really simple way to log in as though they're abacus or as though they're birth of babies. And you'd see down at the bottom, um, I'm pointing my finger at my screen as though you'll see it. In the lower left, you can see that username is there. And it simply passes that string along. And it's going to log me in as birth of babies. Again, if this was training users, you only want them to access the training stream. Or maybe you have a couple of different training streams to show them and be able to get across the point of streams themselves. Um, so again, pretty simple to do. All we do is we create a user directory connector that is going to point to a couple of CSV files. And we build those CSV files out that have their properties. We build some security rules that are tied so that we know what they can access. Um, so in this way, you can have these arbitrary, however many you want, users that are just going to be able to log in. There's no real security here because it's just training for crying out loud. If you did want to have security, when you create something, you would create a local connector that's going to go to your local machine to pull those users, not the domain users. Hope that helps you get started. If you're going to try to do some generic test users or some training users, um, you could do this in a variety of ways. And then you can still lock those down by using these custom properties.